Hi, and welcome to the Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube channel. My name's Fort from Son of a Stitch, and a few weeks ago here on the channel, Jackie posted a video showing you six different ways to start your cross stitch thread. This week, I'd like to build on that knowledge a little bit and show you how to figure out where to start. Here at Caterpillar Cross Stitch, we are all about cross stitch, and we upload helpful and, we like to think, entertaining videos about it every single week. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our videos. Uh, likewise, if you like this video, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to leave me a comment down below so that I know I should make more content like it. Likewise, if there's a topic you'd like to see addressed or a question you'd like me to answer, leave that in the comments as well and I'll see what I can do. And before we get too much farther in, I want to remind you that you can get eight free PDF cross stitch patterns in an ebook when you join the Caterpillar Cross Stitch VIP Stitch Club. You'll also get 10% off your first order and you'll get a digital download of Caterpillar's top 10 cross stitching tips. So hit the link down there in the description so that you don't miss out on all those great perks. Now, if you learned how to cross stitch from a book or if you were taught by one of your elders, you were probably told that you always need to start your cross stitch project in the middle. Most of us were not really told why that's the case, just that that's the case. So why is that always the received wisdom? Well, mostly it's so that you can make sure that your project always stays centered on your fabric. You don't have to worry about miscounting or mismeasuring and winding up running off the edge of the fabric. As long as you've used a big enough piece, then your project will stay in the middle of the fabric. So that makes it easier to frame and display later as well. Now, personally, I don't necessarily start in the middle of the fabric. What I do is I count from the middle of the fabric. It's a subtle distinction, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So suppose that this cute funny pattern is my project. Any quality pattern is going to have something on it to designate where the center of it is. So on this one you'll notice that there's an arrow on the sides of the grid. That's indicating the center of the pattern. On caterpillar patterns it's even easier. There's just a red line marking the center vertically and the center horizontally. Now in order to help myself out, I like to make a mark on the pattern that's clearly visible of where the actual center is. Now if I started in the center, I would have like, I'd go this way and then I'd start again and I'd come this way. That's kind of annoying to me. I don't like to start like that. So I'm probably going to want to start here and just work my way all along funny. And then when I go to cute, I'll count from here. That way I just don't have to count as far and it reduces the odds of me making a mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center of my pattern and I'm going to figure out how far away it is to get to where I want to go. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up from my center mark. And then I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, but I always start in the bottom left corner of the stitch, so I'm actually going to go over to 14 as the first place I'm going to bring my needle up. So finding the middle of the pattern is fairly easy, and sometimes it's already done for you. The hard part is finding the middle of the fabric, so let me show you how to do that. So supposing I'm going to stick that, stitch that project on this piece of fabric that I dyed with the uh, shaving cream method. All I want to do to find the center is I'm going to fold it in half, this way and make a little bit of a crease. I don't have to crease all the way along because I don't need all of it to be creased. I just need the center. So then I'm going to fold it this way and that's going to give me a point. And that point is at the center of my fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a needle and just stick that needle through the center stitch of the project. So then that's going to give me my starting point that is going to correspond to the center of my pattern that I've marked. So from there, I would just count over and up the number of stitches that I counted, and that would be where I would make my first stitch. Now once you've found the middle and you've started your first stitch using one of the six methods that Jackie taught you, this is the perfect moment to stop 
and double check the orientation of your fabric. If the piece of fabric that you're using is not square, you need to make sure that you haven't, during that process of folding and unfolding, accidentally rotated it and now using what should be the side as the top. Trust me, I have made this mistake and there was much swearing and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now one of the other most common ways of determining a starting point on a cross stitch project is just to start in a corner. Most people choose the top left corner, but you can choose whatever corner is your favorite. Like the burners on the stove, everybody's got a favorite one and it doesn't really matter all that much. But you do need to take some measurements to make sure that you're starting in the right point. And it's really nice to be centered because it does make it easier to frame and display later. So let's show you how that's done. Now in order to count from the corner, I need to know how much bigger my fabric is than my project is going to wind up. Now a good pattern should tell you that, just how big it's going to be. If not, you can go back to my video on sizing that I did a few weeks ago that'll explain to you how to figure out how big it's going to be based on your fabric count and your project size in stitches. And this one, I already know that it's going to be 3.4 by 3.3 inches. So I'm going to round that off to 3.5 because it doesn't need to be that precise. And my fabric size here, I know because I made this piece of fabric, is 8 by 10. So the amount that my fabric is bigger is 4.5 by 6.5 inches. Now I need that to be equal on either side, so I need to be 2.25 by 3.25 inches from the edge. So I will get it kind of close to the right area and then I'll put my pin here, or my needle here, so I know that that line in the fabric is 2.25 inches. So now, at the 2.25 inch line, I need to put my needle at 3.25 inches. Now you can do all this with, like, fabric markers or dressmaker's chalk, but I'm just always paranoid that they won't come out. So that is my zero point. That is my top left corner of my project. So this right here corresponds to this stitch right here. So now, in order to figure out where to actually make my first stitch, I need to count from this point. Now, since I've done the top left corner, those are already counted and numbered, which is amazing. So if I'm going to start at the top of the C right here, then I need to go over 16 and down 4. So from this point, I'm going to count over 16 and down 4, and that's where I'm going to make my first stitch to start in the top left corner of the project. And this seems like the perfect time to recommend to you the other components of the Caterpillar Cross Stitch community. It's not just this YouTube channel. There's an Instagram with tons and tons of followers, and there's a Facebook group with over 18,000 members. Cumulatively, that is hundreds of thousands of years of cross-stitching experience just waiting there for you to be able to take advantage of it. And it's an extremely supportive and generous community. I highly recommend joining. So make sure you check both of those out. But what do you do if your project is round? Counting from the corner is going to involve counting a long way away from that corner and you might miss count or it's just annoying. So that's where a kind of hybrid of these two methods can come in, where you can start in the top middle or where you can start in the left middle of your project. Then you only have to find the middle of the fabric in one direction, and then you can just start from there. So let me show you that. So this spot right here is the center of my fabric and 3.25 inches from the top. So what I'm going to do is take my fabric again, fold it in half again, and then I have that barely visible crease there after I open it back up. I'm going to line my ruler right up with that, line the zero point on my ruler up with the edge of the fabric, and I'm going to use one of my needles to mark 3.25 inches from the top. So this point 
at the wrong side of my needle. This point right here in my fabric is going to correspond to this point right here in my pattern. So I can then decide based on my stitching preferences where I'm going to start. Personally, because it would be just so easy, I would probably start right at the top of the T. So I would count down two stitches over one stitch, make this stitch right here very, very first. So it'd be very easy to count from there. Well, that covers the ways that I most frequently use to figure out where I'm going to start on my project. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. I want to thank you so much for watching. My name is Ford for Caterpillar Cross Stitch. See you next time. Hi, have you heard about Love It Stitch It yet? You can design and shop the cross stitch patterns you've always wanted. Love It Stitch It is an easy to use design tool and exclusive cross stitch marketplace, giving you the freedom to create, sell and shop all in one place. You can design anything that you like and text, upload and convert pictures and artwork. You can design the cross stitch patterns of your dream. You can download them for personal use or you can upload them onto the marketplace designed by cross stitchers for cross stitchers, jam packed with some gorgeous cross stitch patterns from designers all over the world. If you're not interested in designing or selling, that's totally fine too. Just visit the marketplace and you can shop from hundreds of beautiful cross stitch patterns so you can pick your next project. Are you already a cross stitch designer? But maybe you're fed up of other marketplaces, maybe not getting the sales that you deserve, maybe not getting your patterns seen as much as you'd like, then let us help. You can easily register for free and get uploading your PDF patterns with absolutely no fees whatsoever. Let us then market your gorgeous designs that you've put all of your work into to over 185,000 dedicated cross stitchers from all over the world. We will absolutely do our best to get your patterns seen and into the right hands of people that we know will absolutely love stitching them. As a designer, you can easily list your PDF patterns for sale, no matter which software you use to design them. Our job is to make cross stitch design accessible to all. There's nothing to upgrade, there's nothing to download. It's really easy to use and beginner friendly. We also wanted to create the marketplace to bring sellers and buyers together so that it's really easy and such an enjoyable experience to shop all of the high quality verified designs on the platform, but also to give those amazing designers a place to really showcase their creativity. So visit loveitstitchit.com today and register for free. Stitch what you love and free your creativity.